Tears of the Kingdom is about to do something, or technically has already likely done something that is unprecedented, that is unheard of, that is record breaking. I can't believe we get to talk about this today, this far out from the game coming out. This is the sort of news that you normally would not receive until, I don't know, maybe a week before the game comes out. But that's how impressive this is, and it leads to a grander conversation. Now, before we get into it, I want to remind you that we are on our road to 100,000 subscribers. We always have these little subscriber goals. And you know what? We're less than 10K away, so this kind of seems attainable. If we could somehow get there by the time Tears of the Kingdom comes out, we'll just give away a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom as my thanks to all of you. Uh, and we'll probably have a celebration stream as well and have some fun there. Now, that being said, let's get into this news today. And we're talking about The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom because Tears of the Kingdom has actually done something that is very noteworthy, very newsworthy, and worth having deeper discussions on. And that is that Tears of the Kingdom has surpassed Breath of the Wild in pre-orders. Let that sink in. Breath of the Wild, the best-selling game of all time, for Zelda, has surpassed Breath of the Wild. Now, Breath of the Wild was the most pre-ordered Zelda game in history, and now Tears of the Kingdom is setting a new record with pre-orders. It has surpassed the pre-orders of Breath of the Wild. This original report comes out of Japan, coming from COM-G, but it's highly likely this holds true everywhere else. We have this tweet from Player Essence, who was... He was just talking about, you know, defeating the whole narrative of bad marketing for Tears of the Kingdom. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, he pointed out that for new releases, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is the number one seller on Amazon. Oh, it's not just the number one seller on Amazon here in the U.S. It's also the number one seller on Amazon in Japan. Oh, and before that, by the way, those are the two major sales stories for the game. It's also the number one most wanted game from Famitsu Magazine. Guys, Tears of the Kingdom is setting pre-order records and is likely going to have a launch weekend for the history books. Look, if Scarlet and Violet did 10 million in three days, what if Tears of the Kingdom does that? There's a couple conversations to have here about setting pre-order records one, it obviously means out the gate, Tears of the Kingdom is going to be the fastest selling Zelda game ever made. Now, that's incredible, that's amazing, and that is something that is noteworthy, and we need to give Tears of the Kingdom and the Zelda team and Nintendo all of the credit for that. But also, they're doing this amid the game being, you know, price hiked. Granted, it's technically not price hiked in every territory. I want to be clear about that. This whole $70 price that we debate about here in North America isn't really that debated in other territories because... They've been selling games at higher prices this entire time. We're more so catching up to them. So either way, uh, Tears of the Kingdom's price point has not slowed down its pre-order status. And the so-called lack of marketing hasn't seemingly hurt the pre-order status either. Now, I do think Tears of the Kingdom does benefit from the fact that it's coming off the most popular Zelda game to ever exist. And yeah, Breath of the Wild was doing crazy numbers too. Not only was it the most pre-ordered Zelda game, it sold more copies at launch than Nintendo Switches were available. Let that sink in. More copies were sold than systems you could actually play it on. People were buying Breath of the Wild day one and then waiting to get a Switch. And like, that's insane. That doesn't happen. You figured, oh, I'll just pick up the game when I pick up the Switch. Nope. I'm so hyped for this. I, I, I want the box. I want to stare at it. I want to dream about playing it. Or maybe I just get lucky and my friend has a Switch and they just let me borrow theirs. Look, it, it's absolutely insane, the pre-order numbers that Tears of the Kingdom is doing. Breath of the Wild had an insane launch. It already became uh, the second best or third best selling Zelda game during launch. And then it quickly surpassed 10 million units within a couple of months. I think Tears of the Kingdom is going to do that even faster. I wouldn't be surprised if we're talking a week out from launch, it's sold 10 million copies. And that's because the hype is real. It is a sequel to the most popular, best-selling Zelda game of all time. The hype is real. It just being a sequel alone is enough. And the debates about their, oh, have they shown enough? Look, when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. They must have shown enough. Now, to be clear, 
a lot of my marketing uh, talk and a lot of the criticism about the marketing was supposed to be about the casual audience that isn't going to be there day one, but we'll be picking it up later. And Player Essence makes a really good point about this uh, when he responded to some other people. And I, I want to echo his thoughts because it is a thought process that has been brought up to me, but maybe I don't understand the scale at which this is going to be happening the casual market could catch wind of it and end up picking it up based on word of mouth. And I understand that, and I've argued against that before, but I also forgot just how many people bought Breath of the Wild and how many people were going to pick up Tears of the Kingdom at launch, and it creating such a wave that it will be hard for even the casual audience to not hear about this game from someone at some point, even if it's not online the wave, I think, is going to be so big that people will be talking about it at coffee shops. People will be talking about it when they're outside their churches. People will be talking about this game on the playground. It's going to be a highly talked about game. And because of that, I do think the casual audience is going to catch wind. Now, that doesn't mean I don't think that more marketing could be more sales, but... Clearly, Nintendo knows what they're doing. And by the way, there's going to be more marketing. Like, <laughs> what's lost in the conversations about the lack of marketing is that there's still going to be some. This video is arguably a type of marketing. I'm telling you that Tears of the Kingdom, $70, very little shown, and it's already the most pre-ordered Zelda game in the history of Zelda. Are you kidding me? Like, think about... Think about what's going to happen once this game is actually out and people can share information about it. The only way... This backfires for Nintendo. There's one possible way. Because it's going to come out the gate firing. It's going to be the second best selling Zelda game almost instantly. The only way it backfires is if the game can't back it up. If the game doesn't back up the hype, doesn't back up the expectations, and then the talk is about how disappointing the game is, yes, that can hurt the attach rate to the casual audience. So, there is some thought that that could happen. But if the game is everything it should be, everything it's cracked up to be, if it ends up blowing our minds, it's almost impossible that the casual audience won't find out because people like me, people like you, people like a majority of the people playing the game won't be able to shut up about it. Think about it like this. We're still talking about Breath of the Wild. What, six years on? Six plus years on, we're still talking about Breath of the Wild. We're still making new videos on it. We're still seeing new discoveries. We're still seeing crazy things happen, going viral on TikTok. That's that, That's what Breath of the Wild did. If Tears of the Kingdom does that as well, my lord, we're talking about a wave us Zelda fans have never seen. And just think about this. We saw the biggest wave we've ever seen with Breath of the Wild. Now imagine the wave with this game is even bigger. There's a larger install base. There's now 30 million people who have played Breath of the Wild instead of nobody. Well, besides people who played it at E3, right? Like we have the potential of the largest launch in Switch history. This, I'm going to tell you right now, this launch might be bigger then Scarlet and Violet, which is the fastest selling Nintendo published game of all time. And just think, there's two versions of that. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm sure you're excited as well. Let me know your thoughts on all of this down in the comments below. Let me know where are your hype levels for Tears of the Kingdom right now coming off of this news. And you know what? I'll just catch you guys in that next video. <laughs>